One of the most important things that we do with a used and rare bookstore is buy books. And we travel all over the Boston area, New England, all over the country. Also, people bring in books. We buy individual, single, rare volumes. We sometimes go out and buy estates that there are literally tens of thousands of books in the estate. And we get loads of calls with people wanting to know, how do we sell books? What do you buy? How do you buy them? What information do you need to buy the books? And there's a whole series of questions. When you call a store and you're wondering what we buy, probably the first question we ask is, how many books do you have? And we don't mean by that an exact count, some type of approximation. The next question we ask is, is there any particular type of books? Are there 100 books on collecting buttons? or 200 books on Boston history, or, or a collection of any particular area or subject. Because usually, if someone has a large number of books in one subject, area, or field, it usually means they've really devoted themselves to collecting and they're better. Another thing that comes up is people ask, well, how can we get you the information? We suggest taking photographs. Uh, many times, if the books are in decent condition, you can take a picture of a few shelves at a time, get 30, 40, 50, 100 books, even in a uh, photo. We can look at those photos and we can tell if there's something that looks really good. We can sometimes give an approximation of price. When you do pictures, one of the things I always have to emphasize, they need to be in very sharp focus. Because a lot of times we need to enlarge them to really see the titles. And if they're in slightly out of focus, it gets blurry. So I emphasize that. One thing that also is very helpful for us is that there's something that you particularly want us to see, you know, show that in a photo. Also, don't crop the photo if you can avoid it so that we can get a perspective of the size. Sometimes a ruler or something to give us perspective on that helps too. Here's an example. This is a, a copy of The Little Prince. Um, now, one of the things, it, it does have a paper dust jacket, so we can see that it has the jacket. The fact that there's a little chip in the jacket in a photo, that would show very well. The fact that it's a little brown, that can all make a difference, what the spine looks like. But one of the key things, either on a list or on, the, uh, on a picture, is the title page. The title the author, the publisher. Now in this case, there's no date on the title page, and that's what we want to see. We, and if you're writing it on a list, just put no date. On the next page, there's a copyright date. That date never changes. So if someone puts the copyright date, we don't know whether it's the actual publisher date. Here I have an older book, and when you open it up to the title page on this book, you look, you have again the basic information, the title, the author, the publisher, but at the bottom here you do have a date. And that's the image that we need, that's the date we need on a list. That tells us when the book was actually done. Or there are times when, if you show us a book and we look at it, and it looks like just a regular edition, this is Catcher in the Rye, but it's very important to show us that it's signed by J.D. Salinger. We can look at an image like this, authenticate it, or at least tell whether it looks real. And quite honestly, this can make tens of thousands of dollars difference. When we go out to the house, we bring our own boxes. If we come to an, uh, an agreement at the time, we can write a check in many cases and move the books right on the spot. But the one thing that really has to be done before we get there is if there are people that are in the family, involved in the estate, or in the personal library that you're selling, that whatever you're keeping be sorted out before we're there. Because we can look at books very, very quickly, but what we can't do is at every book say, are you keeping this one? Are you keeping this one? Are you keeping this one? It really comes down to the fact that many times the hardest decision in selling books is the emotional attachment to them. Usually, the money, which is very, very important, is the easier part. It either works or it doesn't work. In addition to books, we also buy letters, documents, autographs, signed books, 
I will emphasize that if there's something that comes in that might not be absolutely in our area, and we've been doing this, it's been in my family for over 60 years and I've been doing it full time for almost 40 and all my life, we know most of it. But anytime we run into something that we're not sure about, we know who to call. And that's actually one of the most important things. You don't need to know everything, but you need to know who the best person to call. And when it's necessary, we call them in and we work with them. As far as going out uh, at the store, we buy books Monday through Saturday, nine to five. Uh, people can call ahead if they want, but we always have someone here who can look. And going out to estates, uh, we accept calls Monday through Saturday, uh, but we also usually go out weekdays during working hours, but quite honestly, if someone has the right estate, we have to do it to their convenience. And it's almost like being Jim Hawkins on Treasure Island every day, never knowing who you're going to meet, what you're going to see, the people, the places, the books.